Namaste. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, as we started the AA PGT Sankalpa series to help the current PG needs to aspiring PG need students with their preparation by providing notes, daily questions, solutions, and mentoring by the seniors and doubt solving by teachers, etc. As part of that, we are hosting our first session, which is Crack the Code. Uh, mentoring sessions by the seniors who, who were once aspirants and, but now achievers and are currently pursuing PG in various colleges. So today we have Vasis Subramanian sir uh, who is currently doing second year PG in Government Ayurvedic Medical College, Bengaluru in RSBK department. So over to you Vasis sir. Hi everyone, uh, good evening. Uh, Namaste. Uh, so thank you for the introduction and uh, uh, before I start all this, uh, I would just like to put up a disclaimer that I'm not a typical PG aspirant and I think you can relate with me. Uh, so I'll tell you why. So basically, I'm uh, my both my parents are Ayurvedic doctors and uh, during the initial phase of my UG, I did my undergraduation at SDM Institute of Ayurveda. Uh, I'm the first batch, uh, one among the first batch students and I, it, uh, it was in 2015 that I joined there. So there, uh, the first three years, probably uh, I wanted to do PG. I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to finish UG and then to PG, probably uh, wanting to teach in a professional college or such. But then uh, by the end of the final year and during internship, uh, I thought PG is not something that I would prefer immediately. I wanted some more experiences. I, I got a thought that uh, during those three, four years in UG, uh, I haven't gained enough experience to be called a doctor yet. You, you are called a doctor once you pass your final year. But are you ready for it? That question came up in my mind. And then I heard a lot of experiences of how PG was not a perfect uh, course as such, PG in Ayurveda. So then I decided that I would take uh, at least an year's break, one year break. I would. My initial plan was to go to different uh, Vaidyas and then learn from them. Uh, just to understand the different uh, styles of practice. Uh, so uh, I think 2021 May was when I finished my internship. And uh, in March of uh, 2021, uh, there was a call up for MSc in Marmachikitsa and Sports Medicine in NIA uh, Jaipur. So they had introduced this new course called MSc. And it was a two year course. and what happened was I applied for it. I applied for it because it was something, uh, the topics that I wanted in Shalya Tantra was already in this. And I wanted something alternative to post-graduation also. Uh, and uh, then the list came and around 25, 30 applicants were there for this course. And then uh, I uh, had to go to Jaipur to write an uh, entrance examination, uh, 50 mark paper. And I wrote it and uh, the uh, top five were selected for uh, an interview. So uh, actually, uh, initially they told that 25 marks was supposed to be the cutoff. If you scored about 25, you will be selected for uh, the interview. But uh, then after our performance, probably uh, out of the 30 applicants, only around 10 came and uh, all of us scored less than 25. So the top five were selected for the interview. And the next day we had the interview. Uh, I, uh, being the son of a Marma Vaidya, uh, I had a, a good, decent uh, understanding of what Marma Chikitsa is and what I wanted to do there in National Institute of Ayurveda. So uh, I gave my best in the interview. I know uh, all the interviewers were uh, happy. And then uh, later I came back home and I had, I thought I had a good chance to uh, get in. Uh, there were only two seats, by the way. So two seats, one general seat and one reserved seat. So for me, it's just one seat, one seat in National Institute of Ayurveda. So after a week or two, 
uh the results came and i was second on the list the first one was given to an mbbs doctor so this course is actually an integrated course anyone from ayurveda mbbs yunani who are interested in marma chikitsa as well as sports medicine they could apply and uh the seat was given to an mbbs doctor so okay, then uh, i didn't feel uh what do you call comfortable with the result and i un i actually lost my faith in all the en- uh, entrance based competitive examinations as such so i decided uh, here also i am not getting so pg how would i get it uh, i had that in my mind and i actually lost interest in pg i didn't want to do pg i actually wanted to practice so then so it, this was in june of 2021 and then by uh, october uh, a new uh, online coaching entrance coaching class was started in kerala so they had a discounted rate and uh, i joined it so it was online classes daily classes were going on one week i attended uh, one week i attended i made notes all those things and then slowly i lost track because i didn't like the way they teach you for the entrance examination i am i i prefer to learn ayurveda with its true essence to put up the hard work there but here i am uh, learning codes skipping all uh, things which will not come for examinations and then uh, so slowly i lost track of that but they used to conduct exams weekly so weekly there was test i tried attending almost all the weekly tests by then i had joined uh, popular uh, ayurvedic orthopedic uh, physician at trivandrum and i was uh, there for almost 6 7 months and in the meantime all the saturdays i used to attend the test it's not that i got the highest mark in any of that i somewhere in the lower half of the table i used to get the marks then so yeah just one week of preparation and then uh, every week i used to attempt test even if i didn't know anything it was just okay a b c d you just attempted because i wanted to attempt it so then this happened then i came back from trivandrum and then uh, in my uh, place there were a few friends uh, four five friends who were also uh, who had also applied for the aapgt so i uh, even though i was not interested i thought okay let me just uh, apply for it have the experience of it i knew uh, i am not an academically uh, dedicated person for learning competitive examination but then okay i thought i will just put uh, an attempt so me and my friends uh, almost every day night we used to after dinner we used to sit for an hour or two and uh, we used to just uh, solve question papers so one would read the question the other four would attempt uh, to answer it and then we'll check whether the answers are correct so this was going on for almost one month one and a half months uh, september and i think until september so then what was the intention was that i knew that i couldn't study mug up everything in this uh, syllabus the syllabus is vast everyone knows that there are a lot of things there are a lot of things to mug up there are uh can you hear me kartik
Hello. Okay, uh, so what I was telling is that uh, so I was I knew that I was not capable to mug up all these things, probably because I was not interested in it. And uh, later, uh, I just wanted to attempt the questions because it was fun. Okay, you have four options. You can uh, look for okay, what is the best. Uh, choice among those four. So that's all we did. We solved at least 50, 60 papers. And then it was, uh, I understood it as better preparation can be there academically. More people would have prepared much more better than me. But preparing to face the questions while writing the exams is something that uh, we all have to prepare for. There is a uh, huge probability that most of the questions that come for the entrance exams will be those which you have not prepared for or which you have forgotten so then i realized that preparing to the face uh, preparing to face those questions mentally was something that i should uh, uh, do so then okay the exam dates came and then we went to uh, write the exams i was still because i had no expectations uh, I just wanted that experience of writing it. And I knew uh, if I I wouldn't get it and I would have another year uh, to continue my practice. So then uh, we went, it was in Trishur. Um, I'm from Palakkad and we had to travel two, two and a half hours. And then since I had no expectations, I, I was uh, very calm. I wanted to, I was just observing all that was happening there, how people study how people were tensed, how uh, some were just coming for their first attempt, just like me. And then, uh, so I attempted the paper. I solved around 40. I knew confidently that all those 40 questions were correct. Uh, another, uh, then I realized, okay, 40 questions if I solve, uh, it's 40 into 4, 160 marks, which is, not enough to get into a good college. So anyway, I, ha I didn't have anything to lose. So I uh, attempted a total of 107 questions. Most of them, uh, I would have, I would have to guess between two options or three options. So at first I uh, did those which I had a confusion between two options and then Finally, I saw some 80 questions I had solved. So another, I knew that uh, if you had to get to a good mark, you need to attempt at least 100. Then finally, I attempted 107 questions. Uh, and then we came out, there were people crying there. There were people who were like, okay, I, uh, I wouldn't get it. There were people like, okay, I attempted well. And there were people who were expecting the answer key to come out. Uh, I was just chill. We had good lunch and then we met uh, some other friends and then we came back. So when the results came, uh, I got a rank of 1449, if I'm not wrong. So 1449, it's not the best rank I know. Uh, but for the level of preparation that I did, I think it was a great mark. There were people who had prepared a lot better than me, who was doing their second attempt, third attempt, but I scored better than them. Whether it is a fluke or the way I prepared to face those questions, uh, I think that's uh, <laughs> that's a question that is there. Then uh, finally, uh, the option entry time came. I didn't want uh i didn't want to work so hard for pg because i have heard from 
uh, a lot of my seniors my friends in other colleges that okay pg is where you are made to work a lot without uh, you getting any of the benefits of it uh not the academic work as such uh, per se uh, it's more of administrative work uh, writing work all those things so finally i am here in uh, rashya astra department and uh, so all the best for you guys but uh, before that if you guys have any specific questions on what specifically i did uh, kartik you can ask me and then what was your schedule and routine during your preparations okay so the initial two one, one month probably uh, i uh, the first few weeks i attempted uh, to listen to the classes evening uh, it was there for two hours i did prepare some notes but then i lost track of it then I, uh, my schedule was every saturday i used to attempt the papers saturday night or sunday morning uh, they would release the answer key and i would just uh, go through it what i went wrong and what was right i did not prepare much for it then lastly i as i told uh, we used to sit with friends and uh, uh, night 9 to 11 or something we used to solve papers so i told you uh, i'm i was not a typical pg aspirant okay i want to stay stick on to a schedule and study like that my uh, attempt or uh, my idea was to gain experience out of it that's it i didn't want pg as say so <laughs> my schedule i don't think most people here would be following them uh, i just um, I wanted to tell you that uh, you can keep on preparing academically uh, but uh, at that moment when you are uh, attempting the paper you should not uh, forget things the ones that you have prepared it's about preparing yourself to deal with how to uh, face a question how to navigate through those options and how to select the best one that comes to your mind uh, so schedule wise i don't think i would be a good person to copy like what were your main study resources like books online courses coaching and do you think uh, aapjt can be cracked without any external coaching paid courses etc mm true uh, so i as i told you i had joined this online uh, coaching class called ami academy it's, uh, it's uh, run by ama ayurvedic medical association of india and kerala and uh, they it was their first uh, try also uh, uh, we were the first uh, what do you call guinea pigs of that and uh, their tests helped me a lot uh, i wouldn't say their classes helped me a lot because i didn't attend many of them their tests attempted uh, helped me a lot and then their uh, they used to give notes uh, pdf notes uh, i think it's common for most of those uh, coaching classes all of them give notes or all of them tell you a way to prepare notes so that was there and then you can uh, crack a pgt without coaching classes i am uh, i am i think i am 100% sure of that to get a good rank uh, i think you need uh, either you need a good co- coaching or you need a good uh, disciplined or a good set of friends who you can study together with apgt i it's very difficult to study alone if you are uh, not disciplined enough so uh, you can you can get a good rank uh, even though i uh, had joined a coaching class i did uh, i did gain out of it exam wise uh, content wise it was not much for me and uh, Uh, the usual books i had referred uh, govind parik and a uh, lot of question papers i try to download a lot of them and the question papers of the coaching classes and i used to uh, collect some question papers uh, as i told you uh, we sat as friends uh, we sat together to write this so uh, question papers 
that's what I, uh, has helped me more than the textbooks than contents uh yeah so that's it and about your time management during preparation uh, were any <laughs> other things were going on in your life during that time or yeah, you were yeah. completely dedicated yourself for no, the no, no, pgt no. preparation no no i, I, I told you right uh, i was not completely involved in this preparation uh, i as i told you the six months time i was i spent with uh, spent in a hospital and in that hospital uh, it was almost a 24/7 duty uh, casualties of fractures used to come so it, it's an ayurvedic hospital so it's called triveni nursing home in trivandrum if you oh, for those who are interested they can um, go through their videos or stuff so it was not a perfect schedule for me and mostly probably because i was not aiming for a pg that year i wanted to continue practicing with other clinicians in kerala so time management we used to sit uh, in the night solve question papers at least one or two we used to solve completely and then uh, see who who got a better and it was more of an oral quiz kind of thing one person would have, have the book uh, he or she would ask the question tell the options and other others would guess it basically because we had not prepared much and then we guess we used to guess it and then okay then we got used to that we got the hang out uh, hang of it we understood which all questions were repeating and a uh, quite a lot of uh, questions come from the same portions so uh, repeatedly when you solve papers and check the answers uh, you get to know a lot of it uh, i did make some notes uh, based on govind parik book ayurveda sangraha uh, i used to uh, watch videos of uh, apgt preparation channel it's there in youtube so they uh, the uh, one of the playlist uh, is uh, uh study of govind parik book itself so using that and referring to the book i used to prepare notes uh, apart from that i didn't have a strict time schedule i was uh, uh when i was in trivandrum i was practicing then when i was at home <laughs> i was involved in a lot of things uh like uh, medicine preparation and sometimes consultations also uh we have a question from one of our viewers uh okay. the question is what was the result of your friends with whom you used to solve papers okay uh, so two three of them got uh, within 3000 or 4000 uh, two of them got 8000 something uh, all of them uh, uh, qualified for the uh, uh, what do you call qualified with the minimum uh, marks but uh, my intention was as i told my intention was to uh, know how to face those questions uh, those who uh, there were two of them who were repeating uh, they had attempted twice they have one of them attempted thrice but uh, i scored better than them probably because i was not worried about getting into pg and uh, uh, two of them joined uh, one in parul university and uh, one in trivandrum that's that's very uh, unique way to put it uh, sir so you are not worried into getting into pg that's why you got into pg uh, it, it matters a lot times <laughs> it actually matters a lot because uh, i was i wanted the experience of writing the paper more than i want i didn't want uh, it was not compulsorily compulsory for me that i had to get pg that year itself it was just an experience for me and so again as i told uh, it was probably because we solved so many papers so sol- uh, solved so many questions and uh, in the last 2 3 years the pattern has changed a lot it's not based on the usual textbooks as, as such uh, ayurveda sangraha you can learn the whole thing and probably 10 to 30 questions would come out of it so that's there 
uh, the pattern is changing drastically. So I think it's better to be prepared to know, OK, I have a question. I have four options. OK, I know that one option is not completely wrong for sure. So I have three options. And then I think logically, OK, is it right or is it wrong? They do put confusing question, confusing options. But uh, at one point of time, you would, uh, after solving so many uh, questions, be like, OK, it will not be this. It would be this. It comes to your mind. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of the questions that I attempted. I, I uh, some of them, some of them I uh, remember the answers. Uh, as in, uh, they were a repetition of the previous papers somewhere uh, in the last ten years. Some uh, were uh, completely new. Somewhere, uh, somewhere those which I had no idea about. But uh, when I saw the options, I was like, okay, these three cannot be the correct answer. So then I took the right one. So the experience of uh, the building of the courage to face the question and the options is something. I think if everyone prepares for that, uh, plus they have prepared academically, they have gone through all the basics, they have mugged up some things, they would surely get a rank. Uh, thank you. Now I have a set of questions which are very interlinked. Okay. Okay. So, what were some mistakes you made during your preparation? How did you okay. correct them? Um, mm -hmm. What was your approach? Uh, sorry. So, what techniques did you use to stay motivated? Um, mm -hmm. How how did you deal with any kind of stress or anxiety during your preparation? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, can you uh, put uh, one question for the first question? Yeah. You can just repeat the first question. Okay. First question, okay. What were some mistakes you made during your preparation and how did you correct them? Okay. What do you wish you had done differently? Okay, done. I'll uh, tell my answer and then you can put up the next question even though they are interlinked. So uh, firstly, I was not having a good aim. OK, I want to get PG. Uh, is it a mistake? No, I probably postponed it to the next two years. OK, 2021, I didn't write, attempt it, the first one. I wanted that break. 2022, I did attempt it. And uh, 2022 itself, uh, I didn't, I was not expecting myself to uh, get a seat. I wa I actually expected not to get a seat so that I can continue uh, visiting different doctors and uh, practicing. And then uh, afterwards, uh, so 2022, it was not that I wanted, okay, I should get PG this time. I didn't have that aim. Uh, I think it's necessary. Uh, but I had the aim, okay, I should have a good experience out of it. I should learn from uh, the experience of writing the examination that I had. So how I corrected it. So I, since I didn't have that team and uh, I somehow got into it, I, I didn't make efforts to correct it. Uh, some other stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, while preparing notes, it is very important that while we are preparing it, uh, we keep on repeating it. We uh, the content is so much that we tend to move from one topic to the next to the next to the next. But if we don't keep a proper uh, time to revise what we have learned previously, I don't think it would be of use. You will surely forget it. And too many codes are not good. I feel probably because of my study methodology, uh, we tend to remember the codes, but we forget what was supposed to be there behind them so uh, for me too many codes uh, i had uh, in initial stages all the classes all online youtube videos everything was uh, teaching in a way okay they used to uh, put up stories put up uh, short codes mnemonics and all but finally uh, after maybe 15 days you would remember the story half of it the mnemonic you wouldn't remember you wouldn't know what was behind them. So for those who are good with it, uh, please go on. But 
for others i don't think it is a great idea it's better to learn the concepts and uh understand them thirdly uh studying the whole concept no uh, it's practically not possible in a one year time or six months time what you can do is pick out those points which are exceptions for example in vata jajwara there may be a lot of lakshanas related to vata but there might be that one kapha ja lakshana in that so those are the ones that uh, they would ask during uh, the exams so it's important to pick out and uh, remember those exceptions exceptions in all context from nidanas to chikitsa sometimes there would be uh, sanyapana in kafaja patient so it's an exception uh, to the general rule as such so those things they do ask in the question papers and uh, to correct them uh, I, for uh, for me all, all the correction happened during the solving of papers okay today i got it wrong and then uh i remembered that this is an exception uh, to it to the general rule so that was going on uh so other than that again i told you know i am not a typical pg aspirant those questions uh i didn't have have, have a clear cut uh, uh what do you call disciplined study pattern to it so i don't feel it's a mistake that's there it's more about what i wanted to do then somehow i ended up here for the good probably um before we get to our my question uh we okay. have one question from viewer so okay. how much one need to get rank to get bhu or nia or a a double ia okay uh general uh rankings it varies a lot during each year depending on the uh interest of students of that particular year secondly uh the vacancies people do look into vacancies okay this department has a lot of vacancies so i would get it there is a better chance that i would get job in there so it varies a little bit every year but uh, then central institutes if you are a general category person you need to get within 200 250 that's the max uh 200 250 all the government colleges it varies uh for example in gmc bangalore uh, my year it was uh, around 1500 for the general rank uh, reservations uh, depending on the range of reservation even an 8000 rank person would get into a central university and uh, it depends it depends on who uh, how the people in front of you are opting for the seats uh, i don't know the exact uh, ranks of last year but uh, i remember that it was within 200 uh, during uh, 2022 entrance examination and uh, these ranks are uh, subjective to change a lot for example uh, one of my friends Uh, he got an all india rank of uh, 1000s in the 1000s uh, it was in 2021 entrance examination so in karnataka he would have got in gmc mysore bangalore or in ballari college but uh, then uh, he waited for the andhra research he was a native of andhra and he had scored the first rank there so it's subjective to that very subjective uh, ranks can vary but you need a below of 200 250 rank to get into a central institution from the general quota thank you uh, so coming to our previous question the the where where we stopped so oh, okay. did you get any stress or anxiety during your preparation if so how did you mm-hmm. deal with it and how did you keep yourself motivated even though uh you didn't aim to clearly um for cracking the pg uh, you mm-hmm. must have undergone through something so how did yeah, you yeah. cope up with it okay uh even though uh, i didn't want to get pg then i had applied for the entrance examination dates had come uh, all our friends uh, we put up a 
uh, uh, the exam center in the nearby locality only, uh, in the sense that we all could travel together. Then uh, what uh, I understood was during the course of preparation with my friends, I, as I told, they were repeaters. They had gone to coaching classes and all, and they knew a lot. <laughs> they knew a lot of stuff. Uh, they knew a lot, a uh, lot in the sense if I were uh, knowing 10%, uh, they would be somewhere around 50-60%. And uh, they were well prepared. They had lots of codes. They could uh, remember all the uh, classifications of uh, diseases or classification of treatments. They could pick out what is what. Uh, sometimes when I used to read a question, I wouldn't know which context it is from. Uh, but then they would tell that, OK, then I realized, OK, that was actually a demotivation for me in the sense okay anyway uh, demotivation in the sense that uh okay they knew these answers because they prepared i have not prepared well so it's okay that i uh, i'm not knowing it but still uh, uh, answering things continued and then uh, that was there but then it was the mindset of it i didn't it was not that i wanted the pg i, I keep on repeating it because most people here would want the PG uh, immediately, as soon as possible. Uh, so it, the mindset matters a lot. What you want, it's the process of it. You should enjoy the process. You should enjoy the journey to it. And you should enjoy uh, writing the exam also. I actually enjoyed writing the exams because uh, you are writing, uh, you are attempting it on a computer. And you have a lot of options. So on the right side, you will get the question numbers. And you could flag the questions which you have doubt. So it was an interesting experience for me. So the mindset matters. And uh, probably I was a bit worried uh, the morning of the exam. Uh, we were traveling in a car. And uh, we had to leave at 5. Because uh, some uh, we had to leave at 5, 5.30. Uh, it's two two and a half hours from my uh, residence. And uh, during the car travel, usually I sleep off uh, while I'm traveling. But that morning, I couldn't sleep. I was probably overthinking, not in a worried sense, but again, somewhere uh, it was there in my head. So, yeah, that's it. Um, so any subject specific tips and um, exam day strategy? Okay. Subject specific, Samhitas matter a lot. All three Samhitas plus there are Samhitas from which questions come like Harita Samhita and Bela Samhita. Bela Samhita usually at least two questions come. So other Samhitas is a syllabus point there. So uh, those if you focus on, uh, you get a majority of uh, questions. Rashastra around three to five questions can come. Thing is, it can come from anywhere. So uh, you cannot sit and prepare one single subject the whole time. But these uh, Samhitas part, uh, including the other Samhitas like Bela, Harita, Kashyapa, questions do come uh, very regularly. Uh, then exam day strategies. Wake up fresh. I, I don't think competitive exam and getting into a PG seat is a crucial turning point in your life. Uh, I feel that everyone should take it as an experience. I think everyone should face the questions bravely. I think everyone should use their head while solving the papers. Uh, you know what would happen for most people who have prepared previously uh, very well. Uh, OK, they went through the first five questions. They did well. OK, they are confident now. But the sixth question, it is a very easy question, but it they blank out. They don't remember what uh, what is the answer. So when that happens, you know, they uh, lose their confidence. They lose their motive. And they keep on thinking uh, about it when they are solving the rest of the paper. And that is not a good thing, I feel. you Your head should be clear when you are facing each of the questions. And uh, OK, another thing is there are questions. OK, there would be a question where its options would indicate the answer for another questions. So all those things you wouldn't remember if you are 
I always uh, what do you call continuously worried and thinking and thinking and thinking you should remember what questions came previously and uh, you don't need to hurry a lot you get the time for solving each paper each question and uh, most uh, now nowadays the last two years questions are becoming bigger you need to read and understand english i think if you have a good hold of english uh, you can understand the question better as well as the re- uh, assertion and reasoning part and their options uh, they are uh, the question paper uh, whoever has put up the question paper uh, they are now including small grammatical what do you call grammatical uh, differences in the options and uh, uh, language wise that would be difficult for some people and uh, remember to first attempt all the questions that you know it can be less you that you know confidently if you know 30 to 50 uh you are decent you are no more you are great so after that comes the uh, what do you call the significant part you need to attempt at least 100 to 110 questions minimum to get a good rank there is a good chance that uh all of them can go wrong the ones you guess but uh, you need to make a wise decision on each question uh as i told before uh, there can okay uh, when you see a question and you see the options you can sometimes you can rule out one or two options there and then and then comes the other two options uh, there if you would have a doubt you would keep thinking but you have to make a logical conclusion to that and you should uh, whenever you have a confusion between two options just go go with it when you have an option with three uh, confusion with three options then you should think you should uh, remember the previous questions which has come already it, there might be some connection match the followings are easiest to score because you would know something out of those options match the followings as well as statements they would give statements and tell uh, this is true this is not true a is true b is false a and b are true so those come uh, those can be scored nicely and uh, i don't remember i don't know last year but uh, the year before that uh, image based question was there uh, to i identify it so that's all exam day just chill right put up your head you i am not telling that be careless just uh, go attempt uh, get everything you should be intelligent enough to attempt those questions it's not about knowing or not knowing uh, it's about deciding whether to attempt the question and how uh, you should have that set of 100 110 questions so you can leave 10 so apart from the 10 you have to attempt otherwise uh, you, it's not possible to get a good rank uh, you can only uh, calculate so if you attempt 100 questions it will be 400 marks if all of them are correct so that's a very good mark so even if uh, out of that 25 goes wrong you can subtract it will be in the 300s it's uh, again a good rank uh, people are uh, within 1000 rank a score that much uh, more than 300 i scored uh, 241 or 46 if i am not wrong uh, so we have a next question how um, how to study samhitas in right way uh, from the pg point of view right yeah <laughs> from the pc so point of view yeah ah no i mean to study samhita as the right way i don't think uh, none of the coaching classes or none of the students are studying the samhita as the right way as they are meant to be for pg exams but for pg exams you need uh, big, uh, charaka samhita you need to prepare chapter wise notes Uh, just go through the chapter each day if you are preparing one or two chapters you need to fit all of that in half to one page whatever is there in one chapter certain chapters would exceed one page but i am sure that uh, the majority at least 80% of the chapters would fit in one page so those are your pressure tools 
so you would know that okay indre sthana questions are not uh, usually uh, coming and probably in the first chapter it would come first chapter of indre sthana apart from that uh, you wouldn't get it but uh, in the purva rupa avasthas you, there would be some arista lakshanas those would be there so uh, first i think it's better to go through the previous uh, papers and see what kind of questions are coming what kind of options are coming and then uh, you will get a hang of okay i these uh, these portions okay vimanasthana eighth chapter all these are coming it's a huge chapter yeah, it's not practically possible to study and by heart all of it but if you are familiar with the words the concepts then i think it is a better thing so charaka then comes sushruta most of us wouldn't have learned sushruta completely at least uh, read once or at least know the chapter titles so first okay as i told you uh, one page for each chapter on the title uh, the title should be remembered so all the chapters of all the samhita should be remembered chapter names first then you would know okay which context it has been told and then you can remember uh, you will know how to pick the right answer uh, charaka sushruta sushruta is one which would trouble us a lot because we are not taught it much during the ug uh, charaka you would know most of it ashtanga hridaya and ashtanga sangraha ashtanga sangraha very less comes only those uh, there are certain questions uh, the probably a chikitsa sutra would be different in charaka sushruta vagbata both vagbatas so then such certain points are there which we can understand uh, through get uh, through previous papers and also collect notes from whichever source you can it's not practically possible for one person to sit and prepare notes of it so you uh, that's why i told create a group uh, share the notes collect notes from those who are going to coaching classes that would help uh, for a, uh, okay uh, there is uh, nagrajsa's coaching right uh, in udupi so again uh, i think uh, what they do is even though they prepare they attempt tests every day so that attempting that questions is a uh, really important thing so samhita wise also you if you have pre- uh, attempted at least 10 question papers previously you would know what portions to focus on uh, uh, i think uh, sutra sthana lot of questions come nidana sthana also come vimana sthana certain points come then chikitsa sthana some uh, lot of come like in chikitsa sthana purva rupas lakshanas chikitsa all of them come but as i told you the exceptions those are the ones which we should remember properly because general rule we can remember okay pita uh, pita tok is there we can uh, assume that it's a pitta roga or a pitta beda of uh, jwara rakta pitta or even kamala pandu so knowing that seven so if there is uh, uh, rakta mootrata in a kafaja condition then that's an exception so as i told before exceptions are some all the points where exceptions are there we should note it down and remember they do ask some questions like who is the author of this samhita all uh, lot of come a lot of those books come in uh, samhita all the darshana based books and then comes in rashastra and bhashya okay so basavara gm who has uh, written the author uh, who is the author of it so such questions come i hope i answered you but uh, thing is samhita is very vast one person cannot sit and prepare the whole of it yeah, unless you are sitting for it completely is it okay
I think there was some network issue. Yeah, I, I'm back now. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. So, uh, what's the next question? Okay, is it necessary to buy hard slow cast, right? Uh, if you are into by hearting slow cast, like from the first year of UG, if you had by hearted, uh, probably okay, layers of talk, it it is actually helpful while solving the paper. You don't need to sit and by heart new slow cast, only those where you can enlist uh, different things. Uh, for those who are not capable of by hearting slow cast, don't attempt it because. It's just an additional burden for you. Uh, for the PG sake, I'm telling you. Uh, apart from that, for practice and all, you need to put the effort. But for PG sake, uh, in a short period of time, uh, to buy heart all the slokas, to at, uh, you can buy heart those which you are comfortable with. They would help during the examinations to pick the right option. We had a question about the layers of talk and uh, which uh, in which layer a particular condition comes. Uh, since I remembered uh, the my first year and uh, remembered that sloka, I could at, uh, answer it confidently. So it was among the first 40 that I had attempted. So slokas, if you are comfortable, please by heart. Uh, please revise the slokas which you had already learned previously during your undergraduation. Other slokas, if you are if you are an expert in slokas, you can go with it. But uh, if you're not comfortable with it, uh, it's better to avoid for PG sake. So one of the final question we have today for you is what after giving PG it? The time period between giving exams and results, how it will be? Should should one plan for what to like they will be knowing their marks after key answers are released in one to two days so mm -hmm. what should one do like uh, which department they should choose which one is the best department or like what are the advices that okay mm -hmm. so uh if you are your exam uh, just relax for a few days if you are looking for alternative things okay there are pg is not the only course you have after undergraduation in ayurveda bms there are a lot of people who go with other courses uh, most popularly mph uh, that is masters in public health there are people who go with mba uh, there are people who go with masters in hospital administration uh, there are people who choose this MSc degrees. So MSc, there are there is MSc in Ayurveda biology in uh, TDU uh, in Bangalore. Apart from that, uh, there are MSc degrees in National Institute of Ayurveda, as I mentioned before. There is one in Marma Chikitsa and Sports Medicine. There is one in uh, Yoga and uh, Cardiac Health. Uh, there is one in Diet and Nutrition in Ayurveda. There is one in Manuscriptology, if you are interested in that uh yeah so all these mscs are also there don't uh, think that pg is the only option that we have pg is a step in the sense that pg with pg you get that md degree but uh i don't think everyone needs it i don't think that post graduation is a must Mostly because as I'm experiencing now, post-graduation quality has dropped a lot. You are not gaining much out of it. You are okay. You, you are surviving it with your own efforts. You can do uh, learn a lot. But apart from that, you don't get a lot of support during uh, post-graduation, especially in the government colleges. Facilities wise, uh, as well as uh, assistance from faculties wise. And uh, uh, so after you attempt the exam, just chill, uh, look through your options. Uh, people might think that post-graduation is the only option. There, there are a lot of great practitioners out there without post-graduation. 
there are a lot of uh, people in uh, there are people in who who after undergraduation did masters in public health and uh, joined WHO as a regional coordinator as regional uh, what do you call sectoral coordinators etc and uh, you go through your options uh, you can plan your future but uh, you should be ready to uh, be flexible in that path so as i told uh, my plan was to practice for another two years but uh, somehow i got post graduation so i had not thought about what to choose where to choose i i honestly didn't know that i would get such a rank uh, i knew that i had attempted 40 questions correctly uh, the rest i was not sure i didn't check the key also and uh, when the rank came okay uh, based on my previous years I, I was sure that i would get to a, get a seat in a government college uh, then uh, okay again as i told i didn't want a want to be in a place where you are made to work a lot you are not given time for your own work you are not given a uh, good academic assistance also so uh, finally i chose rashastra vaishya because uh, non clinical i wanted a non clinical subject uh, i i get holidays all the government holidays i get uh, i can uh, come to college at 9 and go by 4 i get stipend uh, at least once in 6 months so you get the perks of that when you are in a government college but you had to face a lot of uh, other uh, demerits also. So subject wise, if you are interested in a particular subject, just go with it. Uh, don't see which college. If you are interested in a subject and if you are not interested in a particular subject, but two or three subjects, you select them in that order. Uh, from my point of view, if you want stipend, uh, government colleges are the only option and uh, uh, and central institute i am not including central institute based on uh, my experience as i had not attempted uh, to apply there and uh, you would get it uh, those who are scoring a good rank would get it and the stipend is very high you get a good quality education i am uh, not telling uh, ayurveda as such they would teach but you can progress gradually in that pathway uh, Subjects, uh, I think it's always based on the interest of the person who is there. If you are looking uh, for just a teaching job, then you have to see which uh, which departments are vacancy in the coming after three years. So uh, all these, if you are uh, thinking about it and calculating it, uh, I think uh, now uh, Kriya Sharira and Sharira Achana and uh, Agatha Tantra, all these have vacancies. So those you would get job after three years, surely. So, but you need to have interest if you are uh, committing yourself to a particular subject for three years. Unless you have that interest, whichever subject you take, it will be sometimes uh, that interest comes to you after you join the post graduation also. So if you have an interest in particular subject, see which colleges, contact your seniors, uh, see how the faculty, see how the infrastructure is, see what all opportunities uh, you can get from each of those colleges, make a list out of it. And uh, uh, if you are not into a particular subject, if you just want to have a post-graduation degree, then see what is your priority, whether you want to be clinical within a particular subject or whether you want uh, to have time for yourself to do things that you like or you want uh, you want to just teach so any subject is fine most uh, so considering all this it is very individualistic what subject to choose and uh, to choose and which is the best subject also uh, for me i will tell you my example so i actually didn't want a, uh, i i like shalya tantra but i don't i like shalya tantra uh, from the Marma point of view or the Bhagna point of view. But in Karnataka, there is no college which is uh, having faculties who practice it in a confident way. You rarely get a fracture case or anything. So I was okay. I, I, 
I didn't want uh, this uh, Shalya Tantra do, to do Shalya Tantra in Karnataka. Similarly, all the other clinical branches. Then I wanted to be in touch with the clinical side. I wanted my PG to be helpful during my clinical practice in the future. So I had two options there. One is Samhita. Samhita, you study all the subjects. You are much more perfect with what is there in the test. And you would know how to apply it if you are going uh, and learning from a good person. Second option for me was uh, Rashastra and Bhaisaja Kalpana. Uh, even though it is a considered to be a non-clinical pharmaceutical subject, uh, the benefits of doing post-graduation Rashastra Bhaisaja Kalpana is uh, many. Even during, you can prepare your own medicine, uh, the first perk. Secondly, you can uh, know how a medicine acts in the clinical level. So both benefits are there. So then uh, in the first allotment, I got uh, Rashastra Bhaisaja Kalpana in SDM Asan. And then uh, I knew that I would, there was a good chance that I would get in a, get a government seat. So I didn't want to, I just wanted to experience government seat again. Uh, I knew that SDM was better infrastructure wise, better academic wise, classes wise, uh, much more organized, much more structured. Uh, I Since I did uh, my undergraduation in SDM itself and in a private setup, I wanted to know how the government sector works. So I I, want, I didn't settle for Shastra Vaishya in SDM Hassan, I, which I feel presently that it would have been a better choice for me academically. Uh, I got it in uh, the second allotment and any post-graduation if it, uh, to learn, to understand, to contribute to the uh, Shastra, I think we need to put efforts on our own. So that's there. Uh, I, I don't think I can suggest a particular subject for you directly, but it, uh, it's individualistic. I think I explained it enough. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, just a, just a second. Okay, now. Uh, so to summarize, uh, to summarize this whole session, um, it's the mantra of keeping your head cool, having best study groups, solving papers every day, and going, trusting the instinct of your gut is the key to achieve. And key to, yeah. and facing the exams bravely. Is it all that? To summarize and put it in one single sentence. I would just like to add that it's not blindly trusting your gut. It's <laughs> about intelligently trusting your gut. You need to know where yeah. to stop attempting blindly. Because your gut might say, okay, I will attempt this also. What is going to happen? But that one question might be uh, one, uh, one to four marks can change ranks up to hundreds. So that is there. Especially in the middle part, uh, from 1,800 uh, to uh, 2,500, it would be a difference of just 20, 25 marks maximum. So uh, at four, five, up to 50 people might get the same rank, same score. Uh, so based on their age, based on their alphabetic thing, it would be ranked. So you need to know when to stop. So it's about intelligently attempting it. You will get it. You will get it most of the time right when you keep on attempting the questions. There are a lot of Telegram groups out there. And daily hundreds of questions comes up. You just have to keep on attempting them. That is there. And you have, it's not about blindly attempting the questions also. You need to attempt question papers as such, the whole of those 120 questions. Because then only you will know how to attempt in an exam scenario. If you are, okay, you are going in a car and you are, or you are traveling to your college and you are uh, attempting on your phone, Telegram, uh, randomly different questions it would help it would help 
but unless you solve the question paper as a whole you wouldn't know what to connect from where what all are the connecting things what all are repetitive things you wouldn't know so you should be prepared for all of that also it's about keeping your mind cool doing what you like uh, and understand that it's not the end of the world and there are a lot of other options post graduation is becoming saturated i think kartik would agree to me that the educational system needs to be completely shifted so that's it i would i would i would agree with you in every point and any given day because the thing you said about intelligently trusting your gut it happened to me during my ug neat um i was very weak in physics uh, i knew 9 to 10 questions pakka i knew the answers like questions from semiconductors and all i knew but my gut said uh, anyways you don't know the other other 35 so why simply leave them out just do one thing attend all of the 35 even if you get 10 correct and 25 wrong it will be a plus for you but instead True. all the 35 got uh, got incorrect and i got 6 marks in physics finally <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you cannot blindly so trust it affected gut. me <laughs> very badly going by your mm-hmm. gut also the point you said about intelligently trusting your gut is is uh, very true to the point every word of it and i would ag- agree with you on any given day so yeah yeah and <laughs> education system as i said we have to make a most of what we are studying now uh, and develop our skills along with and build a, actually the most important thing we ayurveda as ayurveda doctors or students failing is to build a good community like you st- uh, said study groups that's where community building starts to have each other to support each other uh, that's where we are lagging today more than pursuing any pg courses that's where we i think we should concentrate ourselves more in to build a proper community to support each other mm-hmm. and and to let ayurveda reach everyone mm-hmm. another thing i will just add on to that uh, from avp uh, krishna kumar ji sir used to say uh, all the bms pass outs need not be vaidyas if they are all are vaidyas then ayurveda would die because you need ayurveda those who know ayurveda in all the fields there should be actors who know ayurveda properly there should be sports people who know ayurveda properly they sh- uh, properly they sh- there should be politicians who know ayurveda properly there should be diplomats who know ayurveda properly unless there is an ayurveda person in all the field it's not practically possible for ayurveda to grow uh, and not in the sense that uh, uh, we are saturated doctor wise uh, we have enough doctors in this country or not but based on your skills based on your intentions based on your interests each of us should contribute to the science then contribute to the people and uh, this can be done only if there are people everywhere those who know ayurveda so just an added point and uh, yeah. all uh, yeah you can continue Hi. yeah i would agree that that that's why networking is the key that's where we are failing today uh, we have just one last question um, okay. the question is i am interested in both the subjects of samhita and swastharutha which subject would be better to go towards one last question okay uh, i would explain it as i see it uh, from my point of view it would be different from others point of view swastharutha if you are outspoken go with swastavrutta you have a great market for swastavrutta out there if you are interested in clinical practice and if you are interested in teaching if you are interested in understanding ayurveda better if you are an introvert learn samhita because you need you can easily outreach people with swastavrutta you, you need that public um, uh, point of view so swastavrutta would pay you more if you are market oriented if you are uh, much more outspoken samhita would be much more beneficial in the end clinically and personally as an ayurveda doctor so by answer 
I don't know how you come up with the best of the best advisors every single time and best answers to every questions. Um, we are re- we are really glad to have you on the session today, sir. Because every time I interact with you, be it any issue, be it ge- geopolitics, be it history, be it Ayurveda, or be it anything, it's always very good to interact with you. uh it's it's overwhelming to interact with you you always put the best your approach is different your thinking is different so i think you are the best mentor anyone can ever have as a senior as a brother and as a teacher so really really uh, glad you- to have you on the session today and thank you so I, much I, for I, accepting the invitation on just a single message uh I, i don't think i would be the best mentor from a pg <laughs> point of view there are a lot of people who are much better aspirants those who have studied well those who are prepared well those who are scheduled well uh i just do it my way and i hope at least a few people could connect to it and no it's just my it's just my duty to uh, share what i went through and what was there in my mind because at least a few people could can relate to my uh my point of view there uh, i think in the future sessions there would be a lot better mentors who can streamline this completely for you in a academically way uh it would help you prepare well it would help you face the papers well and finally contribute to the shastra and people well yeah again this is what the thing i like most in you you never boast about yourself no matter what because not just few many you represent many of us this is how many study in the end this is actually this is how people should approach with their life like keeping their head cool keeping at, uh, taking things as they are and uh, considering the possibilities of doing many things in life uh not going as per the sop uh, standard operating procedure or protocol set by um, the education system of today uh, doing a crea- uh, all together a different thing is what the world needs or is what the our system needs today so you represent many of us and and not just for pg when i said a mentor i meant the mentor for life and you are definitely the one you should take the credits for it so thank, you, thank, thank you, you again for joining us today and i hope um, many can learn a lot from this session or t- can take away so many positives from this session and we hope you host uh, you next uh, again so many times and in future uh, if possible arrange a physical interaction also uh, if the uh, if everything goes as per uh, the plan and the future permits it so until that bye okay yeah, everyone thank you again be well think well good night thank you thank you everyone for joining stay tuned on our channel for more such insightful sessions and interactions see bye